Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Lovely to be here in Zurich, my very first time in Switzerland. So the sun is shining. Is it normally sunny like this all the time or, or not so much? <laughs> no, isn't it? Very nice indeed. OK, so let's get started. All right, so great to be here, as I said, guys um, and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're going to be going for about, I think we're going to go for 45 minutes for the first session and then we're going to do 45 minutes um, trading charts and looking at trading strategies or a particular trading strategy in the next section. Um, before, before I get started though, um, a little bit about yourselves. Is there anybody, whom of you in the audience are completely brand new to trading? Um, put your hands up. Yeah, anyone brand new? So you're all experienced traders. Is that right? All making millions? No? Taking the money from IG or not? No? Okay. So we've got no beginners in the room then. That's, that's fine. Was there one beginner gentleman there? Yeah, just one beginner. Okay, so majority of you have done some trading um, before and have got some experience uh, from trading. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my, my background in, in one second, but I just want to, I just want to confirm with you what we're going to be doing in this session. Um, part one here, we're going to look at, you know, we're just going to, the session really is all about how to become a better trader. There's no such thing as perfection. The only thing is you've just got to make money consistently over years and years and years. And that's what we're trying to do as traders. We're all in the same boat here. We're all trying to do the same thing. We're all together as traders. Only a trader would know what another trader goes through. Um, so we're going to look at something a little bit different on part one here. We're going to go into a little bit of back testing. I was talking to a gentleman about back testing the markets uh, before we started. And also we're going to look at practicing and we're going to look at personality profiling which is looking at our own personality style because what I see from a lot of people is that they're not suited to day trading off a five minute chart. You might be suited to swing trade in the market. So we do a lot of personality profiling in the company. Um, and then part two, we're going to go and have a look at the current market conditions. I noticed that the DAX is selling off big time today, which is great. We're going to look at that. So I took a couple of slides from the DAX a couple of days ago, um, just showing you the, the, the triple top, in fact. You call it a double top if you want, but a triple top. Uh, in the charts and this sell-off was pretty much on the cards before it even started to sell off um, because of that resistance area. And then we're going to look into a hypothetical trading strategy and I'm going to show you a couple of strategies or a strategy that I'm not saying that you can go away and, and trade, I'd certainly want you to back test it first but if you're up for that I'd like to show you a strategy in part two. Are you up for that guys? Yep. And of course, if you're making tons of money as a trader, completely ignore that trading strategy and just carry on doing exactly what you're doing, all right? And then we'll look at the market. And if you've got any questions, I said to, um, I said to the guys at IG, should we do questions at the end? But if you've got any questions, just, um, just say them as we go. All right, guys. Um, so just ask any questions because we don't want to. You probably forget them before we get to the end anyway. All right, so let's make sure this clicker works properly. So I go trying to click it. Oh, here we go. Um, I'm a member of the Society of Technical Analysis. Uh, I'm a certified financial technician. I'm a member of IFTA as well, International Federation of Technical Analysis. Um, what does it all mean? It just means that I'm trained at looking at charts. I'm a technical analyst. Uh, I'm not a fundamental or I don't look at the economy. Uh, you know, today we had a manufacturing report came out at four o'clock this time, local time, but it was already priced into the chart. And so if you want to ask me anything about fundamentals, interest rates, where they're going, I have no idea, okay? I just look at charts. I'm a chartist. I'm a technical analyst. And I'll tell you the reason why in, in a second. Um, I'm a member of the London Society of Technical Analysis. I uh, often speak at the Bankers Association in London. Um, I've got a company called tradingcollege.co.uk. There's loads of free stuff on that website, guys, if you want to just log in and, and take a look at. Um, we teach people to trade the markets. We've been doing it for 10 years. Uh, I mentor 
individuals. I coach people individually as well. Um, so, you know, and we, we take people on trading retreats all around the world as well uh, and trade the financial markets in, in London, all right? And all what we're teaching is chart patterns and strategies from a chart, okay? Um, I often speak at the uh, London IGTV um, on a monthly basis called Charting the Markets Programme, where we're just, looking at, we're just looking at the outlook of a particular market, whether it's Forex, cryptocurrencies, indices, commodities, whatever, um, with Jeremy there, who's uh, the presenter at, at IG. Um, yeah, and, and done some good calls over the, over the years with some of the trades that, that are set up. Okay, let's get into the boring bit. <laughs> um, so, at the age of about nine years of age, I uh, suddenly was sitting in my assembly at school and the headmistress was going around all the children at the time saying, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you get older? And I said, I want to be a professional football player, miss. And she went, oh, don't be stupid. Get yourself a proper job. And as, as soon as she said that to me, that was red rag to a ball. I wanted to become a professional football player. And so I went about, from the age of nine, practicing, training, working hard, after school every day. All the other kids would be off to the, the clubs. I would be on the football pitch or in the, in the street, kicking the ball up against the wall. Um, and at the age of 16, I signed professional forms with Portsmouth Football Club. And then we soon got into the premiership straight away within that year. It was called the first division those days. And I went from 14 pounds a week as an apprentice at 16 to 250 pounds a week within minutes of literally, <laughs> within moments. And what do you do? 250 pounds a week at 16 years of age in 19, what, 85 was it? I, you know, I just spent it and blew the lot basically. And, and enjoyed my time and did what a 16, 17, and 18 year old would do. And it was a surreal career, it really was. Um, I ended up playing 525 games and captain of all my clubs, um, Sheffield United, Portsmouth, Reading, England, youth team to under 21s, um, Stoke City as well. And you know, I finished with a broken neck at the age of 34. I busted my neck in a game I went up for an header and um, I just my, my disc cracked and that was the end of my career. Over and done with, age 34, I had to find another career. So I came out of school with absolutely zero qualifications because all I ever done at school was want to play sports, never interested in maths or English. And so somebody coming out of football without any qualifications whatsoever, what do I do? Well, I'd have been interested in the financial markets. On the way to the games, we would travel for hours and hours, and the other players would be playing cards and gambling and, and so on. I would be reading the papers. And so I started learning about stocks and shares. And so straight away, I had that, I wanted to do that. I couldn't work for anybody else. There's no way I could actually get a, a proper job. I didn't feel like I could, I wasn't qualified at anything. So I decided I wanted to be a trader 17 years ago. And I opened my account with IG in London and I've been with IG ever since. I've never traded with anybody else. Um, it's always been with, with IG. Um, and that's not the reason they got me here, by the way, guys, all right? <laughs> um, and within the first 18 months of trading with IG, I went about losing about 50,000 pounds from trading and I didn't know what I was doing. And it, why would I go from zero to, pro, to consistently making money within the first day of trading? I mean, what other profession can you do that, be successful straight away? So you had to, we had to learn, had to educate myself, had to learn. And so this is where we are today. So I've got my trading room uh, at the trading college offices. Uh, I wrote a book a couple of years ago called uh, Goals to Gold, which was probably the, one of the hardest things I've ever done, is write a book. Um, and it's the journey from sport, professional sport, into trading. And uh, we're going to try and talk a little bit about it here tonight. Um, 
And you don't, on the left-hand side, there's like lots of screens, of course. You know, you know this because you're already trading. But you don't need that. You know, I'm looking at my trades on my phone, on the IG app, looking at the, the laptop at the back. It's so accessible these days. You know, I want to look at multiple markets. Once you learn to trade, as you know, you can trade absolutely anything. And you just need a phone and an, I, you know, an iPad or whatever you're using, mobile device these days. It's so accessible, it really is. This is what I started on, a laptop that was pretty old-fashioned at the time. I think it was a dial-up connection on the internet, if uh, you remember those types of, of laptops. Um, and, you know, I just went about not trading very well from it. And then I decided I needed the education. Of course I needed the education. I needed to know what to do. There wasn't education so much 17 years ago like there is today. I mean, the markets are swamped. The whole trading arena is swamped with people out there trying to teach and show you their stuff. Uh, and of course, you've got to be very careful who you trust. I decided to go to the US. So I flew to the US and spent a week in the Chicago Board of Trade, which was the grains market, soya beans, corn and wheat. And I spent uh, about three days at Merrill Lynch as well because a friend of mine was a dealer there and he let me sit alongside him. I don't know really what I was learning really from, from Merrill because they were dealers. But I learned so much from the traders, the floor traders at the Chicago Board of Trade because they were non-electronic traders. They were people with the, you know, the big coats they wear, the big luminous, big personalities. And so I just went out having dinner with those guys and going and having a few beers with those guys and just learning about what it is. And I, I, I think, you know, the floor trading has got to be one of the toughest things to do. We sit behind a, you know, a computer these days, you know, screaming and shouting on the floor there really was a, a, an experience. And we did some demo trading on, I, wasn't, I didn't have a license to trade, but I was doing demo and learning from those guys. And it is dog eat dog really in that industry. And the pits now are coming to an end as well in the US or have done already. And then I started to, after the first 18 months of trading, I started to make some money. And I started to get consistent because I had a bit of a light bulb moment at that particular time. Um, and really, I came up with what eventually became the success triangle because I realized that trading as a chartist, as a trader, a technical analyst, wasn't about external things that were happening on the chart so much or the news. It was more about what was going on in my mind that turned it around for me. Losing consistently to making consistently. So I came up with the success triangle. And this is what part of the stuff I do with mentoring students. And there's three to four parts of what you, I personally think you should not master, because you don't have to be perfect to make money. I mean, you could have 30% winning trades and still grow your account tremendously. But there's things here that I think that every trader must, and this is what we go from, from complete beginners when we start teaching them and mentoring students. Everyone thinks the, the route to success as a trader is the trading strategy, don't we? The shiny object. What's the trading strategy that's going to make me a million pounds, million dollars, million Swiss, million Swiss franc? What is it going to be? And everyone goes to the strategy, which is the bottom right-hand side. So the bottom right-hand side there is what everyone goes to. But what gives you the right? What gives us the right as traders to have a trading strategy, and then you plug it in, and then you make money consistently straight away? And then there's somebody over here that's been working, been doing this for 18 months, and can't get it right. What gives that person the right to actually do it straight away? And what happens is that they can't. And so what you need, it's not the strategy, because I can give you a trade strategy this, this evening, which I will do, and you can go and test it, but it's what happens when you go live in a real trading account. Don't you agree, guys, yeah? When, it's okay demo trading the markets, which means trading with non-real money, but it's the live trading that matters, isn't it? Would you agree? Is everyone live trading in the room? Is anyone still demo trading Put your hands up, and demo traders, yeah? Okay, thank you, and who's live trading? Put your hands up. Okay, now you live traders, do you remember your first live trade? 
and you've probably done thousands of them, but do you remember your first live trade? When you went from not real money to, to real money, and you know, it went up, you were probably maybe losing 10 Swiss franc or whatever it is, and you go, oh my God, it's the end of the world. And so, demo trading's good. I am an advocate of demo trading. I think demo trading is essential as a beginner if you're starting to trade the markets. And then when you go live, just risk small amounts of money. But it's the transition from the top part, the attitude, and expectations as a trader. What are your expectations as a trader? Get rich quick. What type of trader are you? Why are you learning to trade the markets? Why are you going to put all this time and effort into the markets? What are you going to specialize in? The DAX? The Euro dollar? What is it going to be? And then once you learn a trade strategy and technical analysis, you demo trade, and then you practice and you practice, and then you go live with a live trading account. A lot of people go live too early into their trading account, guys. I think I would practice as long as possible. And then go live with small amounts of money that you're risking, all right? You've got plenty of time to become a trader that can go on and make consistent profits. So really, once you've gone into the demo, once you've done the demo, oh, that's not me. You can consistently start to make money. And for me, it's charting. To, for me, it's the charts, it's the strategies, and using indicators, which I'll show you in one second. So I'm a momentum trader. In my first 18 months, I counter-trended the markets. What's momentum? Momentum is going with the trend, going with the DAX, the trend we've seen over the last three weeks. The DAX has been long and strong. The euro has been down, trending down. And I'm a momentum trader. I go with momentum. It's much more fun going with momentum. If you do counter-trend trading, in my opinion, you will make probably two out of 10 winning trades. And they'd be really exciting trades because the market's collapsing today and, you know, well, not collapsing, but the DAX is dropping hard. It's an exciting trade to take. It's dropping hard. It's counter-trend. But going with the trend, in my opinion, and you know, teaching hundreds of people to trade the markets as well, momentum going with the trend will keep you in this business for, for a long, long time, all right? And so this is a major area, I personally think, and it's called personality profiling. We started this probably about six years ago at Trading College, and I wish I'd known this. You can take photographs, no problem. I wish I'd known this when I, when I was 17 years of age, when I, at my first career, because I would have made so many different decisions. And I would have realized why I did things. Now, at the age of 17, I got thrusted into playing, do you know Liverpool Football Club? Anyone, you know Liverpool Football Club, Anfield? I was playing in the first division there. And I'd watched them on TV as I was growing up. And we went to Anfield, went to the game. And I walked out onto the pitch before the game started. And the cop which is the end behind the goal, was whistling. This was at 1.30, the kickoff was at 3. And they were whistling, trying to intimidate us. And I'm 17, I've got long hair. Highlighted blonde long hair, ridiculous. No wonder it's all fallen out now. And I was intimidated. And I've been watching Liverpool play, and I loved Liverpool. I thought they were a fantastic team to watch. And as the whistle blew and the game started, I was a defender and the TV cameras were there. What happened to me mentally? I literally choked. I literally went under. And I spent 90 minutes, because that's how much a game is of football, I spent 90 minutes not trying to touch the ball. Because my voice in my head was saying to me, I'm not worthy enough. I shouldn't be here. It just overwhelmed me. It just overwhelmed me playing against this amazing team, my heroes. And I walked off the pitch, we lost 4-0, and I walked off the pitch and I sat in the change room and I sat there with my hands in my head and the manager was having a go at us and shouting at us, as you did in the old days, they would shout at you. And I said, in my head, I said, I'm never, again, I'm never going to be like that again. I'm never going to let my mind overtake 
you know, my, my career, me moving forward, whatever career I was going to do. So I went about, in, in, in the late 80s, I went about getting, there was no sports psychologist then at all, uh, there was counsellors. And so I went about getting counselled by this guy. And he literally just turned it all around, turned it around. Without him, I don't think, mentally, I would have gone on and, and had played 525 games. And so going back to this personality profiling, there are four types of people. Now, it's not, you're not pigeonholed into one area here. And as I go through this, maybe think about what type of trader you are or type of personality you've got. Um, the top left-hand side is a dominance type of personality. Now, we don't just guess what clients' personalities they are. We basically run reports on them. So we do a test on them. It's, it's a personality profiling test. It goes off to the US. The US come back with the results about that thick of their profile. So then as teachers, as coaches, we can teach them the right way. And so we know where to sort of, you know, gently say, well, you need to be this type of trader. Because a lot of people that are losing money as traders probably not trade in the right markets or, or right time frames. So dominance, direct, decisive, high ego, problem solver, risk taker, self-starter, dominance, top left-hand side. Look, you just look at the president of the US, <laughs> Donald Trump, yeah? And look at him. Is he a D personality? Imagine him in the markets. Imagine him being a trader. He would say the market's wrong. And the market's never wrong, is it? If he loses money, you say, no, I want that back, IG. I want that back. That's mine. So they're very direct, decisive. So when I'm teaching somebody that's very direct, they've normally blown a trading account out already. I have to slow them down. You have to slow them down and stop because the chances of them blowing an account in three months are really high. So I have to slow them down. And I have to get them to back test and go through a trading strategy properly. And every time they take a trade, that they then don't just dive in. Because a D personality will over leverage, over position size, just do too much position sizing and over trade. All right? So a D, we have to move them into more C. Now a C personality, bottom left here, is what 70% of our traders at Trading College come to us with C personalities. What's a C personality? Well, probably what most of us are in this room. And that is somebody that's accurate, analytical, conscious, fact finder, precise, systematic. Is this ring a bell, guys? Anything to do with trading? Systematic, precise. We look at charts. We look at detail. We look at data. So that's why 70% of people trading in college are set, uh, C personalities. And then you've got the steady personality, good listener, trusting team player, possessive, predictable, and understanding. An S personality will demo trade for months and months and months and months and more than likely not go live until they have to test it, they have to practice it, you know, they have to be confident that they are basically ready to go and, and do it okay. Um, and then the I personality is the fun, the enthusiastic, the trusting, optimistic, persuasive, talkative, impulsive, probably the person that's the life and soul of the party. We all got friends that are very you know, enthusiastic, life and soul of the party. Traders, if they're a trader, an I personality, we have to make sure they go to C personality because an I personality is going to jump from strategy to strategy, from strategy to strategy, and never stick with one particular trading strategy, guys, all right? So an I personality is, is somebody that we've got to make sure that they move into another area here and, um, and get serious, because I said they'll jump from thing to thing, all right? Just a show of hands here. Anybody, as we've just briefly gone through that, see personality types or a bit of both? I mean, you're not always, you're not there's no 100%, we don't have, the highest percentage uh, is 92% somebody came in at with a C personality, which means they are high Cs. There are high Cs, low Cs, high Ds, low Ds, and so on. Husband and wife's in the room, partners, they're jogging each other now saying, you know, you're like this. High C, C personalities in the room, hands up. Any C personalities, like charts, like data, like analytical stuff, yeah? Lots of you guys. Yeah, like that. Steady. Um, D personalities. 
Here he is. Yeah, okay. Good stuff. Excellent. Um, and then, of course, the I's and the S's are all right. So, you know, just one more thing about the S's. The S's will test and test and test for a long, long time. And they will just test. And they'll test and test and test. And, and they literally will carry on testing until it's perfection. And it just, we, we know as traders, you don't find perfection as a trader um, unless you're Goldman Sachs, of course. All right, so yeah, um, just something to think about. You know, it, just take a look at it. And I think if it, anything to help you with your trading, move you forward, um, I think is a benefit for you. Okay. So practice repeating and learning, become more successful and process orientated. Something I wasn't very good at being a um, process orientated. Um, I think, you know, it's, I'm a, I'm a keen golfer. Any golfers in the room at all? No golf? Oh, there's quite a few. Excellent. Yeah, golfers, excellent. The, mo the hardest game in the world to play, I think. You've got a little ball like that that just looks up at you and laughs when you just go and hit the ball. It's so technical golf. It's so psychological. It's so outcome driven. Golf is such a tough game. It reminds me so much about trading as an individual retail trader. Um, um, software changes are required, guys. IT department hasn't, hasn't paid the bill or something there. There's something going on. Um, so as a golfer, you, you, know, you cannot get good at golf unless you practice the right things. So hear what I said, the right things. Because your mind is obviously sending signals to your muscles. And if you keep on practicing the, the wrong things, myelina, myelination, myelin, comes around an aeon in a cell that keeps sending signals and it grows thicker and thicker and thicker. And so if you're practicing the wrong thing, this myelin around this, these cells basically that send the signals get thicker and thicker. So if you're practicing wrong habits as a trader, then it's going to take a lot of time and practice to get out of those habits. All right, so if you're practicing golf coming over the top, you need to practice something completely the opposite to actually get that skill done. And I relate it to trading. If you're somebody that's very impulsive as a trader, over trades, and now you've got to go, okay, I've got to stop doing that because I'm just draining money here and, and I'm having big winning trades and big losing trades, you know, you've got to, ch something's got to change. Um, and so practice is, is crucial, and that's where you do it in your demo account, okay? Practice, practice, practice. A lot of people practice the strategy, but a lot of people also don't practice how well they can follow a trading strategy. So promise yourself to s give yourself something like s 6, 12 trades, how long you can actually physically, as a human being, not physically, but you know, follow a trade strategy and then see what the results are to the best of your ability. All right, so repeating and learning um, is, is so crucial as a trader. Are there any questions? I'm doing okay at the moment, yeah? Any questions at all? We're good. I think, no, okay, fine. So back testing, let's get a little bit into that. Um, gentleman's done a bit of back testing here in front. Um, and I assume all of you have got strategies, the reason why you basically place a trade. Um, when I was when I, at the Society uh, in London, there was a strategy based on moon cycles and planets. And the data is about $1,000 a month, some website in the US. But this guy had it off to a T. And it doesn't matter what trading strategy you've got, if it's successful, then that's a good start, isn't it? And yeah, I've seen some bizarre trading strategies over, over my time. Um, but back testing is crucial, and this was the secret for me. This is what turned me around. Um, firstly, Mark Douglas as well. If you've not read the book, Mark Douglas Traded in the Zone, please, please buy that book online. I'm sure there's somewhere online. He's writ, writ about two, wrote about two books. Trading in the Zone was one of them, and that book was the, th was the, the key, really, to realising how to make money as a trader. The game of probabilities, the game of being good at following a trading strategy. 
because us humans are dreadful at following rules. Just look at what happens in January after Christmas time. We all go to the gym and then six weeks later we stop going, don't we? All right, and it's the same thing with trading, especially with eye personalities because they'll jump from thing to thing. Back test the strategy. That will give you the confidence if there is good results. Maybe you've done 100 back tests and you found that 60, 70, 80 percent of those trades made you money. I would back test your first profit target. I would have a stop where you decide where your strategy is going to place that stop, and I would have then a profit target. Don't worry if it goes for a big profitable trade of a, a thousand points or whatever, because if you can get 80% winning trades with a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio, then you're going to have a few big winning trades anyway along the line within that sample size, and that's where your account really grows, it's the big winning trades, all right? And that gives confidence, and as we know, the forward testing is, is absolutely key. So. Back testing, sample size, winners. It's, you know, I can stand up here as a, as a coach, as, a, as an educator, and say to you, and you've heard it all before, I know you have, yep, this strategy has 80% winning trades, 20% losing trades, for this example, 75%. And with a one to one risk reward ratio, your account's gonna grow. But what's going to impact? What other things impact, guys? a back testing sample size. What other things? So if I just get on my laptop now and just tested a strategy on a chart that if, if this candlestick is a bullish candlestick, I buy it and I get 20 points profit, 20 points stop. What other things do we need to take into consideration when we're back testing something? That's over to you. It's the interactive bit. Any idea? What about, do you pay a commission? Do you pay a commission? No costs? Do you not? Do you have costs at all? Yeah, yeah. To, for trading? Do you have a spread to pay? Yeah. Do sometimes your strategy, does it happen at two o'clock in the morning when you're asleep? So you've got to take that into consideration, all right? So the cost for trading as well, that's whether it's important the broker you're using is, is, doesn't have to be the cheapest. Customer service has to be good and execution has to be great. But is there anything else? Anything else? Nothing? Okay. All right, so nothing else then. Okay, that's fine. So to become a more process-based trader, um, think about there is a process for every trade strategy. A process. Number one, this, is, this, is, this was a big thing for me and, and all the other stuff that I was listening to at the time just, was, just didn't matter, but it was this. If I could, every trade strategy should have a process. Every trade strategy, what is a process? Number one, can you do it? Does the strategy happen in the morning when you're at your screen? Is it at two o'clock in the morning when you're on your sleep? Can you actually do it physically? When can you do the strategy? I look at trading indicators. I plug trading indicators. Um, IG, I'm sure, have got hundreds of, or they have got hundreds of indicators within their charting platform. Hundreds of them that you can use. Some good ones, some not so good. So you need to know what indicators you're using. And then it's, what's the signal on a chart? What is the signal that you're going to receive? The entry, where are you going to enter this trade? Where's your stop placement going to be? And position sizing. And then probably alongside risk and position sizing, what's your exit plan? Because what we see is when we're coaching people is that they have winning trades, percentage good winning trades, but they never let the trades run when you knew. You take you sacrifice the long-term gains to have short-term comfort and confidence. And I think you've got to learn, get good at letting trades run, because you only need a few trades that go in your favour 
and run well to accelerate your trading account, to grow your trading account. That was the key for me, letting trades run, letting trades run for weeks, maybe even months. So what sort of things could we do to let a trade run for weeks and months and watch the account grow and do absolutely nothing while you're making all that money? What sort of things can we do, guys? Well, we could just not even look at the chart. Don't even look at the trades. Don't look at it every two minutes, going up and down, up and down, up and down. Because every time that little pullback on a chart comes down, it's going to fake you out the market. You're a human being. You've got emotion. You're going to be faked out the trade before it goes higher. How many of you guys have looked back at one of your trades and said, if I was still in that trade, I'd have made another 200 points. Every single one of us has said that. So one of the things that you can do is just not look at it, just turn it off. I mean, I've got trades running in the DAX at the moment, the Euro long at the moment, which is a bit of a momentum trade up at the moment for today. Uh, gold short at the moment. Uh, but, but I was short oil yesterday. That stopped me out on a trailing stop for break even today. Um, and I had a long crypto Bitcoin yesterday. I've not even looked at it. I've accepted my risk. And, you know, I go back and we'll see what the DAX is doing. We'll have a little look at in the break and see how it's doing. But, you know, I'm not there looking at it all the time because, it, look, you know, I'm not saying anything special. I'm not going to be able to sit there and uh, sit through all those swings that we see in the market. Okay. Good. All right. So just going to have a little break. Um, we've gone for about, I think it's about 36 minutes, to be precise. That's my C personality coming out in me there. 36 minutes and 27 seconds, to be precise. All right. So this strategy, this trade, it's not a strategy. It's just a little, little mess around before we go into the break. I want you, on this chart of the dollar versus the Canadian dollar on a weekly chart, I want you to make as much money as possible. All right? I want you to think about when to get into this trade and when to get out of this trade. All right, all of you as a group. Up for this? Yeah? So I'm going to give you the rules of this strategy and I want you to, when you're not going to see the future, so I want you to capitalise and make as much as you possibly can on this trade. All right, I'll explain it one second. It all becomes clear in a moment. This is a chart, all right, and this is the Canadian losing pro real time. It's a candlestick chart. This is a momentum based indicator, but we're not going to look at that. We're just going to look at the candlestick. Now, the rules are, the rules of this strategy, and we're just playing a little game here. There's nothing serious about it. The rules are, when the candlestick turns green, I want you to buy. And when the candlestick turns red, I want you to get out of that long trade, if it ever turns red. And if we ever get a green buy signal. Do you understand the rules? Green and then red, okay? All right, so what I want you to do is, we're not going to put any money on it, we're just going to pretend and see if it goes up or if it goes down. So that's the rules. All right, and just sit there and just think in your own mind whether you'd get in the trade or whether you'd get out of the trade, all right? And as a group, we'll talk about it afterwards, if it's of interest to anyone to talk about it afterwards. All right, so the rules are green and then exit on red. Okay. So now this candlestick here is green. And it's trading around 124 dollar, US dollar, Canadian dollar. Anybody see a pattern on this chart or does anybody want to not get in the trade or does anyone want to get in the trade? Okay, so the next day or the next week, that's a dark green one. It will look green but it's dark green. Anybody know what candlestick type that is there? Bit of a doji type candlestick, yeah, absolutely. What does doji candlestick mean? What would it mean? A bit of, it means a reversal, yeah? Maybe a bit of, gentlemen, what's that? Indecision? 
Followed by an engulfing, yeah. Inside bottom. Inside bottom, yes. In, well, the wick's gone a little bit above the previous high. Okay, so the last one was green. Who would like to, if you're, if you're in the trade, because that's the rules of this little game, who would like to exit that trade? Because I want the winner in the room to make the most amount of money or points. Put your hands up if you'd like to exit this trade. Two people, yep, yeah. put your hands up. It's all right, yep, yeah. two people are exiting the trade. Does everybody else want to stay in the trade? Everyone want to stay in? Yeah? Anybody want to do nothing? Anyone does not want to go in the trade? Put your hands up. Put your hands up if you don't want to do anything. <laughs> it's just like that. It's not real money. It's pretend money. This is the place to do it here. It's pretend money. And it doesn't matter if you look... We, not, we don't look silly, do we? We're just playing a game. Okay. It's gone down. It's still dark green. It's still green. Even though it's dark or, or, or light green, it's still dark green. You're out the trade? I'm out. You're out. Out. Gentlemen at the back's out as well. It's the guys and girls here that are not in the trade. Okay, who's still in the trade? Hands up. All right, good, 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 good. All right, maybe good, maybe not. The market's going to go down here. Okay, so if you went long or bought it, which means buy it, it's actually going to go down here, guys. So the, the gentleman there that got out probably might make most money. Gentleman here still in the trade. Some of you are not in it. So we've got a bit of what candlestick's that? Well, it's called maybe a standard line type candlestick. I've got a slide for you to show the candlesticks at some point. All right, who wants to get out the trade? Hands up. Anyone else? Anyone still in? Gentleman's out. Gentleman's out. <coughs> still in. Gentleman at the back there. Lady at the back? Short. Who's shorting? <coughs> shorting. <laughs> you, you've seen me play this game before. All right. So, gentlemen, shorting. Okay. What type of candlestick is that? Anyone know? A bit like a hammer type candlestick at the low. So, it's gone light green. We'll move on. Okay. Oh, it's gone up. That means it's gone up in value. Okay. It's gone light green. It's gone up. Do you want to get back in? Yeah. He wants to get back in, the gentleman. All right, he's back in. Stay, stick in, stick in. Back in, yes. gentleman's back in. Buy you buy now. Short? Still long. Still, long. Still short or long? <laughs> short. <laughs> You're long at the back. Brilliant. So, gentleman's short. He was short. And now, okay. All right. All right, next one. Anyone not in the trade? Put your hands up. Not in the trade, not in the trade. Not in the trade. All right. Okay, up it goes. All right. It's now creating what the DAX created today, called a double top. Probably a triple top. It's more like, let's call it a double top. What's that sh candlestick? Anybody know? Shooting. shooting star. What does shooting star mean that's going to happen next, more than likely? Thank you. Who said that? The lady that's that. Thank you. Reversal. Potential reversal. Why is it a potential reversal? Yeah, excellent. What's the wick like compared to the body? Long. long. Thank you. Excellent. So it's long. The body's quite small. Sellers came in and won the battle of that candlestick. That's why I love candlesticks, because they give you the sentiment of that candlestick, that day, that week, that month. But, you know, a candlestick that gives a shooting star is normally a reversal candlestick. Up we go again to 1, one thirty. Gentleman's back in, made, he's in two trades. Guys here have done nothing. They've been on holiday to Barbados, doing absolutely nothing, just looking at the charts once a day. Gentleman at the back shorted the market. <coughs> Gentleman back's back in as well. What's happening over this side? We're in and out, or we're still in. The lady's still in, gentleman's still in. It's like a bidding war, isn't it? That's like a property auction. I'm just bidding. <laughs> yep, weekly candlestick. Don't look at your phone to see what happened. Okay. <laughs> That's cheating. <laughs> All right. So you back in. Okay. All right. So we're, we're high. We're at the highs here now. We're 130. We pierced above 130. 130 is a big round number, psychological number. Profits get taken at round numbers. Orders get activated at round numbers, 120, 130, 125, things like that. Who's sticking? Who's staying in? Hands up. 
Who wants to get out of the trade and bank it? Do you want to get out? Bank it. Lady at the back wants to bank. Right, you've banked 130 to 120. You've banked 600 points. Give the lady a round of applause. Come on, give her a round of applause. <laughs> 600 points, well done. All right, so is it going to go higher or is it going to go lower? Oh, what's that type of candlestick? Is it a hammer? It's not, no. Inverted hammer, isn't it? Yeah. Bit of an inverted. It's, it's a bit like a, it's not called a marabuzu type candlestick because they, they, it closed literally right at the highs. And if a candlestick, it closes right at the highs, the price of a candlestick, buyers are very much in charge. Anybody want to buy the market up here? Gentlemen, wants to buy it? You want to buy it? You're selling your long, bank it, well done. We'll give you 131, 700 points, well done. Uh, we won't say give you a round of applause because nobody gave you anyone a round of applause then. So <laughs> we'll uh, move. All right, okay, so we've got another candlestick at the high. Oh, another move higher. What's going to happen next? Yes, pardon? It's going to break out. Should we buy it then? Stay in. Stay in. Anybody want to buy it? You sell. You're banking yours. Seven hundred to you as well. So, okay. So you you banked originally, and then you've done another short trade. Okay. So you short now. Okay. Yeah, they're just moving averages. No, it's just, just no, it's just moving averages. Shooting star at the highs. Anybody want to get into the trade? Guys are here. I know what you guys are going to be doing. You're going to be sticking, aren't you, and staying in? Yeah. Lady there. You selling? Banking? Oh, we'll give you one thirty. We'll give you, what's that, six, eight hundred points? Well done. That's, yeah, six, seven, eight, eight hundred points. Another sort of uncertain candlestick. Another sort of inverted hammer. Should go higher. Well, it does. The enthusiasm in the room picks up when the candlestick goes higher again. We all cheer. Yeah, we're making loads more money here. And then we get all... It's a big engulfing selling candlestick, that one. Who wants to get out the long trade that we originally maybe got in? Gentlemen at the back, you're going to go short? And sell. And sell. So you've banked it and now you're selling. Yep. All right. Guys, we'll stay in. Cutting it, cutting it. Everybody else? Exit. Exit. Anybody want to short it? No. Anyone want to go long the market up here? Gentlemen wants to go long? Yep. Hands up, go long. Gentlemen wants to go long? Sorry? To put a trade order to go short or long? Okay, above the candlestick high? Okay. And where are you going to place that trade order? Where are you going to place the order? Okay, all right. Okay, all right, fine. All right, so it goes yellow. Goes red, banked. Anybody that's long want to get out the trade? Guys want to get out, want to get out, want to get out, want to get out. Excellent. So you've banked around uh, what? Let's call it 130-ish. You've banked also about 600 points. That's what trading's all about. Crowd behaviour, people making decisions, and people thinking what's going to happen next. The majority of you that stayed in from the rules of the system or the strategy was buy on green, sell on red. And we all had different agendas, <laughs> majority of us. We, that was the rules of the game, buy on green, sell on red. So it really is, it's all about getting somebody to just follow a set of rules. Because as soon as it turned green here on the candlestick, 
we all had our own agenda and history to start taking over what's going on. So if it turns green and that was the buy from the red, if you had a stop out trade 20 minutes ago, it might have impact you when you to place this trade. You might have doubt to place this trade. If you're somebody that's made loads of money previously, you know, you might go gun ho and that pullback. So that pullback when there was three candlesticks after the signal was basically a bit of a fake out to people. Some were shorting, some were sticking to it, some were trying to not really too sure what to do. But it was really simple because I gave you the rules. The rules were just buy on green and sell on red. And that's what turned it around for me 17 years ago was all I've got to do to the best of my ability is find a trade strategy that makes, let's call it 80% winning trades and just get good at following that trade strategy. Because if I don't get good at following it, following it then it's going to get really messy. And so this example and this little play game here that we did was just all about can we follow a trade strategy that we've given you. And that's all it is. And that is the secret for trading, guys. All right. Let's, let's get started on the, the exciting bit, the, the nice bit. We got into a bit of psychology, a bit of personality profiling, a bit of back testing sort of stuff. And now we're going to get into the charts. And you know, this is the passion. This is the passion, really, that um, this is the, you know, this is what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, it's to become a trader that makes money consistently, you need all the components. An indicator is just one component. A strategy is just one component. But let's have a little, we're going to look at a trading strategy. And it is a hypothetical trading strategy. And of course, I'm, I, we know those that are brand new to trading, price is on the right and time is down below. You can change your charts to whatever you want to. So you can have price on the left, time down below. You can have line charts, candlestick charts. Akanashi, Renko, range bars, uh, line charts, but these are candlesticks. I tend to use candlesticks because they give you more sentiment. Yes, and feel free to ask questions as you go. You don't have to wait till you. What's the difference between a green line and a dark green line? On this chart here? On the one that we had before. It means it closed <coughs> down on a dark green one. It closed down on a, a dark green Will candlestick. The no, on the day, on the week. It just means it closed down on that week. That means, we're getting off topic a little bit, it's just, it's just a system that basically tells you it closed down on the week as well if it's red. All right. So basically when it's green like that, and it's nothing to do, I've just grabbed that strategy and just brought it here for the game. When it's green like that, it means the trend is still up. All right. More buyers are coming into the market all the time if it stays green. All right. Um, all right. So this now is just a normal candlestick chart, but yeah. Okay, so just want to just give you the heads up on that. Now, I'm a I don't I I I'm not. You know, everyone know what knows what Elliott Wave is. I'm sure. Even if you don't, I'm just going to explain it quickly. I'm not an Elliottician. I don't think you can make money trading Elliott Wave philosophy, in my personal opinion, without other factors that you need. But there is structure to a price. You've seen this structure that I'm going to show you here with Bitcoin recently over the last couple of years, the Dow Jones, the DAX, <laughs> that's, that's yours there, <laughs> nothing to do with me. <laughs> to do with me. Um, but we have impulsive waves and corrective waves. I use Elliott Wave very loosely indeed, I really do. Um, and when you get this, I just want to show you a structure of price really and a trend and it doesn't always fit the bill perfectly. But you do, t this is a wave one up, an impulsive move. Then you get a correct corrective move. And then every trader dreams of getting on a wave three to the upside. Um, and this, when I was doing some training on technical analysis, I had a long, long, spent a long time with the technical analyst at JP Morgan in London. How many, maybe I shouldn't say this on camera, but at the time, how many technical analysts are at JP Morgan in Europe? Just a random question. How many technical analysts, numbers, how many technical analysts work for JP Morgan in Europe? How much? Hundreds? Thousands? Fifty? At the time, so about four years ago, there was two. 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 
because they don't, they don't believe in it. But when, if you ever do technical now, what he taught me was that wave one and wave two pullback often comes at a Fibonacci or a percentage called 76.4%. 76.4% and not the golden ratio of 61.8% on a FIB retracement. So if you ever see a market go up in value, draw your Fibonacci from the low to the higher, and it often comes back to 76.4%, where it turns and goes into a potential wave three. Now, wave three is this accumulation phase that goes on in the markets. It's the start of a trend. It's a reversal. And then you get a wave four pullback, which can be a zigzag and tends to be a pattern on a wave four that is more complicated than wave two pullback. And then we're getting into the maturing phase. Um, and this is gold recently, potential. Bitcoin recently. Maybe the stock markets index, the Dow, the, the S&P, uh, not so much the DAX, I don't think. It's not done this pattern, but the NASDAQ, the Dow, S&P, potentially at this wave five on the monthly charts. And we've all got an opinion, I know, but we trade what we see, not what we think. Saturation phase tends to come where the market goes parabolic and tends to turn up. And you tend to see the moving averages on a chart turn up and angle up. So any time you see the moving averages, if you're using a 20, simple 20 period moving average, if it turns up 45 degrees and even beyond, the trend is probably over. And if price gets too far away from that 20 period and turns up, just look at Bitcoin chart, it comes slamming down. You know, that is not the place to buy it at the highs, at the maturing phase. And then we, this is where we could be, um, where we see this little correction on the Dow and the S&P and the NASDAQ. Funny, today, Apple share price was upgraded by JP Morgan by 20% higher on the day that the markets are getting sold off a little bit, whether they recover into the close. And normally the first trading day of the month is normally an up day, a positive bullish day. But today it seems like it, it, it isn't. Um, and then you go into what I love trading is an ABC, where you get people coming in, so traders coming into the market. Um, and I traded this in 2011, 2012. Um, this pattern on gold. If you go back on the monthly chart of gold, this is picture perfect, by the way. Gold has the ABC, and that was where I was looking to short on the ABC, on the B, and gold has never recovered from that pattern. Never recovered from that pattern. At the time, as it was at the five, wave five and B, it was all over the British press, on the TV, on the BBC, buy gold, buy gold. It was the end of the move. It was the end of the move at ABC, and it's never recovered since, as it's tried to make a bit of a, bit of a rally. Um, this, is, this is actually my setup um, that I look at. I have indicators. This is pro real time, by the way. On the, on the right-hand side, I've got indicators down below, moving averages, and so on. On the right-hand side, the monthly, daily, and one hour. I mean, I'm looking at the monthly. A gentleman said to me, I know you day trade, Lee, but what time frame's the biggest one you go up to? And it's monthly. I go for big moves all the time. Like, I am looking for a big profitable trade all the time. Gentleman said, what's your risk reward ratio? As much as it possibly can be. I look for things that are a minimum of two to one. Because I know I could have three, four losing trades in a row and still make money with a five, six percent um, times my, my risk. If I'm risking one, I want to make five, six, seven, eight. And people will say to you, well, we want you to, you know, you've got to go for three to one. Well, the hardest thing in trading is managing the winning trades. Not getting stopped out. It's the winning trades where you let that trade run. You've got to let it run. That's the only way you will grow a trading account. In my opinion, as a retail trader, trading from charts, you've got to let the trade run. You've just got to ignore, you've got to trail your stop and manage your trading stop. You've got to let those profits run because you'll never get ahead with small winners, small losses unless you're Superman, you know, and you're trading off a five minute chart and you're scalping or whatever all day long. That's tiring. The older I get, the less I want to do. And I'm always looking at monthly charts. This is the Euro dollar. It's been short for, on the monthly for months on end. The daily's been short and so on. I use the pro real time screener. And 
When I first started trading, it used to cost me $500 per month with TradeStation, which is a US charting platform, before I even placed a trade. Now we've got the same capabilities with things like TradeStation, the US bro uh, company, with Pro Real Time. And it, it doesn't cost me anything. As long as I do, was it three or four trades a month, then the platform's all free for me. It's great. And I use the screeners, and it's just fantastic. It's got alerts, I get emails. It's just a really nice piece of, 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 of kit, it really is. All right, so the moment we've been looking at, okay, so this is a hypothetical trading strategy. I'm not saying trade this strategy. I'm saying is, it's hypothetical. It's strategy that I may use or may not use. I can't say whether I'm using it particularly or not. And you've got to basically do some back testing for it. So what happens is that the whole concept of this strategy is to identify a trend on the weekly chart. Identify an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, an uptrend can consist of moving averages underneath the price. The 200 exponential moving average, the 50 exponential moving average, the 20 and the 8 period moving average. Now, believe me, I've tried every single moving average there is out there, and I always come back to the same basic moving averages that work. I like to use exponential moving averages. And if the price, those moving averages are lined up underneath, then it's quite bullish. And if it's the moving averages are lined up above, then it's quite bearish, as you've seen in the euro. Now, if the weekly time frame's trending, going up, what happens when the market on a one hour chart drops dramatically? What's happening there? It's basically out of sync of the bigger time frame. I call it out of sync. So for me, that one hour has to rejoin the daily trend, back into the trend. Because if I was just trading off a weekly chart once a week and I looked at the market one day at the weekend, or let's say a Saturday, you know, that one hour spike down is irrelevant. I wouldn't even seen that. I would just be looking at the weekly charts, hypothetically, okay? So that is just noise. So as a trader, when it gets out of sync of the bigger time frame, isn't that a buying opportunity? The risk reward on this strategy is huge, by the way. So let's take a little look. I use something simple for you that you can use, an indicator called a MACD, a moving average con convergence divergence. And it's basically two moving averages on a chart. All right, the 12 and 26 period moving average and the difference between those gives you a price and gives you the line which is above. And then um, this is the MACD line. And then there's a nine day exponential moving average of, those, of that MACD line above, okay? Which is called the signal line. But we're also looking at the histograms here, the histograms. Now, I, I toured with IG last year and we went to Oslo and Stockholm with John Bollinger and we spoke and I spoke to John about this strategy and he absolutely was encouraged by it. That's all I can say. So let's just take a look. The Euro dollar weekly chart. This was taken a couple of days ago. Now, I want you to look at these moving averages here, the MACD lines. Now, when the MACD lines drop below zero, which is this line here, it's pretty bearish, okay? It's pretty bearish. When the lines together drop below zero, they drop below zero and they go above zero for bullishness. Make sense? Yeah? So below zero, they're bearish. Now, that is replicated on the weekly chart. You can see the price has been trending down on the euro versus the US dollar for weeks on end. Weeks on end. So would I be brave enough to be a buyer on a weekly chart and buy this market? and blow out my trading account, or do I literally look for every opportunity to short it? And it's the second one. I look for every opportunity to short it. So what I do then is then we go down to a four hour time frame. And as I said, please test it first. So if the four hour time frame ever gets out of sync, so what, this, what can help you here is, see these histograms? Now the histograms in the MACD, all they are is telling you the difference between the lines. The height of the histogram is telling you how far are those moving averages from each other. And so if the lines get 
the histograms get really high, that means it's probably you know, gone outside its standard deviation and it's extended on price. So if the euro on the four hour time frame, let's try our little zapper here on the screen. There we go. If the euro on the four hour chart, I'm looking at the left over here, goes up and the histograms start to go one, two, three, four, five, look, at, look what happens to the price. It goes up and then it rejoins the weekly trend, which is down. It goes up here, okay, goes up here, it's easier to probably zap it here, but it goes up here with that other circle and then it rejoins the trend down. And then the one on the right goes all the way up and it rejoins the trend here out of sync from the trend. Why would you short it here? You wouldn't, would you? Why get a worse price for it when you can get a great price for it? Why would you short it at the lows here when it's the worst place to short it? When it feels the most uncomfortable place to short it emotionally is often the best place to short it. So if every time you look at the market and it feels uncomfortable for you, it's probably you're, trading, you're entering at the right time. So what's happening here is that the four hour is getting completely out of sync of the, day, the weekly trend. And you could set alarms in, uh, in pro real time to any time those histograms go high, you can basically look for a short trade in and around those high histograms because it is out of sync. Now what's so good about this strategy that you could use is this risk reward is massive. The risk reward is massive. Here's SMI, weekly chart. In IG, it's called Switzerland Blue Chip Daily Funded Bet. Weekly time frame, moving average on the MACD goes above zero on the weekly. We break out of a range, we've gone sideways most of the summer, and then. <coughs> That's last year, and then 2019, weekly chart, remember? Look at that fake out breakout down below. Look at that fake out breakout right here. That candlestick gives you the heads up, we could reverse. We push higher, we're above the moving averages. The, the MACD goes above the zero line. That's where we are. I don't know where the SMI is today, but that was this week. On another note, we had massive divergence on the weekly chart as well. All right, so on the way up, as we go above the zero line, as we go above the zero line, look at every single four hour out of sync. Look at every single one. Drop down, goes back up. Yes? What are these green, green and red lines on the bottom? These here? Yeah. Oh, I thought I mentioned those. That's the MACD indicator. Uh -huh. All right, so that's the green and red moving average convergence divergence indicator. Just measuring price, which is king, of course, and it's just measuring the move, what's replicating up there, all right. So look at every single time those histograms point down, opposite. What happens to the price? Well, look at the last one on the 25th, 26th of, of this month. You come all the way down, snaps back 200 points nearly. So wouldn't it be great if you could put together a system that took advantage of arbitrary, what do you call it, arbitrage, and out of sync stuff? Yes, it's good. Yeah, well, I see that you rather look at the, 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 the bars than the crossing from the green and red line. Semantic. Yes, yeah, I, I, you, you could also, so you're, you're saying here, if it crosses this line here, you could get in, couldn't you? Yeah, I, 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 like, I like it when these two lines get separated because the price is going to snap back. And you could absolutely make it your own and maybe wait for the lines to cross. No, because I saw that too. Yeah. Maybe, maybe the bars indicate much more precise. They do. And now I see that from you. Yes, they do. Because the, what's going to happen is we've gone outside standard deviations with price and it's going to snap back to the mean. The bigger, if you look at the Dow's latest cut drop in the market, which was a few months back, this was so 
separate, these were so separated from each other, it was the heads up that the market was going to snap back. And if you look at the highs as well, when the MACD is, the, oh, the lines are too high and separated here, the price snap drops. So you just never want to short in that circle and you never want to go long when those MACD lines are too high and are separated from each other, which is one of those like that, one of those like that, and something like that. You never want to go long when you see something like that, unless you want to go long, of course. But the chances of it coming down, stopping you out, and then going back up are really high. All right. So this could give you risk of one. You could, you could make or see returns that could be one, two, three, four, five, six, and, and so on. Yes, <coughs> exactly. But all you've got to really look at with the MACD for this strategy is when they go above the zero line. And that's all I've tested, <coughs> above the zero line. Okay, when it goes above the zero line, which is this line here, the horizontal line, it's bullish, both of them together. When we go down below, it's bearish. And when we get too high, the price is going to drop. When get, they get too low, then the price is going to snap back, more than likely. Make sense? Yeah? Yeah, makes sense? Yeah? Yeah. I have no idea. I have no idea. It's up to you. You test it and find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll tell you a little... T I'll show, I'm not going to say the word tip, but I will give you some suggestions. All right. I wish I had a whiteboard, because I could, I could do some maths and do some drawing here, but I haven't got a whiteboard. Um, let's go just quickly back here. Let's maybe do it together. We can maybe look at it together. Weekly goes above the zero line. It's been above the zero line since July. This is a stock. Nestle. Is that how you say it? Nestle? Nestle? Nestle. Nestle. And every time we drop, we get out of sync. Now, you can see there... We get out of sync on the four hour chart just down here. We drop one, two, three, four, five histograms, it gets separated, and then we snap back. So, where could we put a stop loss order? But if we look at this here, when it starts to break the pivot high, our stop might be under this area here, underneath the pivot high or the pivot low, I should say, for a long time and then we just go on, on the march and start to push higher. Comes down here, we get out of sync here on the four hours. There's our stop, goes up for, for eight hours, then stops us out. All right. Here is a, a suggestion that you might want to use. If you're buying it down here, you can use a Fibonacci 1272 Fib extension. On the swing from high to low, projects the 1272 FIB extension, and that could be your profit target. In the meantime, as it's moving in your favour, you trail your stop underneath maybe the 20 period moving average. See how we're putting together a process now. This is the indicator. I'm going to be doing it every time the weekly does this. When the MACD does that on the weekly, I want to be looking for out of sync on the four hours. Here's my entry, here's my stop, here's my target. You get that down in a, in a, in a rule-based trading um, plan, and then you just trade it. And that's where it breaks down, <laughs> when the human being can't trade it, all right? Because thing, life gets in the way, gets busy. Here is um, the DAX. Now, you could, you day trade, how many day traders in the room? Any day traders out here, in here? Oh, there's quite a few of you, excellent, quite a lot. Excellent. Um, four hour time frame, you could do the same on a four hour chart. Look at the four hour chart. And then you've got to go down to a smaller time frame. Here is the four hour chart. We drop below the moving average. All from here onwards, we've been above the, the MACD zero line. This time, we, we drop below the moving average, uh, the, the zero line. So it's bearish. Everything's much quicker. The smaller the time frame, the quicker you've got to react. The quicker you've got to do things. And so, what about? 
a one hour time frame. So if the four hour is trending down, well, why don't we go down to even a, maybe a five minute or a 15 minute, but what about an hourly chart? So the DAX goes up on that first circle, it gets out of sync with the four hour time frame, and it just rolls over and drops. Hits the 1272 Fib extension, which is the, the middle area. We get a small one in the middle circle, and then we get a small one, maybe a very small profit on the circle on the right. I think that one happened overnight. So the question is, what's going to happen next on the DAX? It actually rallied from this area. All right. So you can use different time frames, multiple time frames. And I know the guys, I can see some of you in the room here that are active traders looking at this potentially thinking, how could I do this? Because if you're shorting, if you're looking for a short trade setup, why on earth short it here? That's, that is where we used to short when we first started trading, didn't we guys? We used to short it right, we used to be the last one in, didn't we? right there and it would reverse and you'd say why is the market against me what am i doing wrong because you're, you're getting in the wrong place you're getting in at the easiest place you should be getting in as it reverts back to the mean which can help you with your which could help you with your macd all right um pound new zealand dollar pound new zealand dollar um is weekly time frame macd has gone above the zero line for the first time do we now look at this going forward? Absolutely. Looking at the pound New Zealand, it's already had a 600 point move in the last, well, in fact, it was a nearly a thousand point move from its low. Now we've gone above the zero line on the weekly and it's not stayed above the zero line for a long period of time. I think this pound New Zealand, I think Sterling is gonna stay above zero line for a long period of time, guys. Of course, we've got Brexit coming. Uh, that's going to be interesting for us back home. But um, pound here, as, as we'll see what happens. But the pound, New Zealand dollar, especially New Zealand dollar, has been weak. Uh, let's see if the pound wants to, to rally. All right. Any, any questions around that? I know you're all very excited when you see that strategy. I know you are. I can sense it in the room. I can sense the excitement in the room. You're thinking, can he finish talking now? Um, yes. Uh, no, it is, I'll have to go over it again afterwards, but that is the MACD line. MACD and the red one? Is the signal line. And signal line is defined as what? The average, is nine period, depends what setting you want to use, but it's a nine period, yes, exponential moving average of the MACD line. Gives you that number. All right. Loads of it online about MACD, just go and research it. I mean, there's loads of stuff about it. It's a great indicator, underestimated indicator, it really is. Um, for those of you that, uh, these are the only indicators, I, um, the only candlesticks really that I use, guys. Happy to take a photograph of them. Um, this is the, these are the only ones. There are books written on Japanese candlesticks, hundreds of pages long. And believe me, um, I've traded, you know, for 17 years now, and these are the only ones that keep cropping up. Uh, Hammer, Shooting Star these marabozu type candlesticks, bozu type, just basically means they close at the high and low, um, straight out the gate pretty much. Um, doji, sort of indecision candlestick, uh, shooting star, sorry, doji, depending on what it is, spinning top type candlestick is indecision. Standard line to normal candlestick in a progression of a trend higher. Shooting star is a, um, reversal candlestick at the highs and a hammer is a reversal candlestick at the lows. Uh, and just a quick slide for you here. Um, I know time's pushing on and we've got to get this done, but you could only have 30% winning trades and you could still grow your trading account. It's going to be really hard to do that because you need to hang on for some big winning trades um, and taking losing trades all the time, all the time. Having so many losing trades is really going to hurt with your confidence. But even if you had a two to one risk reward ratio on the right hand side down the bottom, if you had two to one, you only needed 33% winning trades with a two to one risk reward ratio, less the costs. If you, had, if you, if you risk two to make one, 
you need 66% winning trades to break even on the account. This trading's easy, isn't it? <laughs> easy, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yep, yeah, I go from anything from uh, half a percent all the way up to three percent. All right, yeah, and I, I haven't got many trades open at one time, you know, maybe my maximum amount of trades open at one time about five. All right, so you can work it out there. I look for big trades all the time, I'm trying to go for something big all the time. I want to do less these days and make more than five minute, five minute, five minute. I'm actually really 21 years of age, I've aged that much trading off a five minute chart, you know. Well, I mean, that pound New Zealand went a thousand points. It didn't get all of that at all. But anything that ranges from 200 <coughs> above points, uh, I, I, you know, you, you, sh you do some share dealing trading over here, of course. I mean, that's very popular. Um, it really depends on the average true range of that market and the volatility of that market. If you look at the euro dollar, it's been so quiet, hasn't it? It's been sleeping, it's been boring to trade. Um, but then you've got to compare it to something like the Mexican peso, which moves a thousand pips a day. And you don't want to be in trading that, do you, really? Because <laughs> that, that is lively. So you've got to find something in between. And whether that pound New Zealand, euro yen, they're, they're nice to trade. They're nice to trade, I think. So anything that's above 200 pips, is a, I'm getting into big trade territory for me. Anyway, it's enough for me. If I'm risking 45 to 70 pips, then 200 and beyond is something that I really want to try and go for. Yeah, I mean, majority of the time, I'm looking at the weekly to give me some head, heads up that there's a pattern forming, maybe a head and shoulders top, a double bottom, and then I want to go down to smaller time frames and try and get an entry. Because I, I want to try... What I do is I add to winning trades and I also add to losing trades as well. And, and, and people go, you'd never add to losing trade, but I do if I split my position up. So if my position is going to be one lot or whatever, I, you know, or whatever it is, shares. I, I sometimes split that up and have a nibble on the trade and have a bite at that trade. And if it goes in my favour, then I can add to the position once my stop's gone to break even. And then when it gets out of sync from the weekly chart, then I can add another trade. Now I can do, you know, when we do spread betting in the UK, I mean, we can get up to like £400 a point, easy, £500 at IG index without them batting an eyelid. 500 pounds a point with IG is what they accept electronically without having to have a dealer intervene with that. So with, that's London, I don't know about here, but so we can add to winning trades, can't you, as they go in your favour. As soon as, let's say you're risking 3%, you do a trade now and you're, you've got no trades open, you risk 3% on this trade. So your maximum risk is 3% of your trading account. The market goes up 50 points. Now, you move your stop to break even and a little bit higher, what's the risk to your trading account then, percentage? What's the risk percentage to your trading account if you move your stop loss order above entry of where you entered the trade? It's not a trick question. What is it? Zero. 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 Yeah, zero. Zero. So once it goes to zero, you can open another trade and risk 3%. If your maximum risk for your account was 3%, then you can open another 3%. And then when it gets out of sync again, you, you've got two positions open, both with a stop at break even, you've got zero risk, unless the market gaps down, of course, beyond your stop, but then you can open another trade. So now I'm building a position, and then when it takes off and goes three, 400 points, pound New Zealand, I'm in it more than I would do with one position. What a lot of people do, especially when they, you know, I see people come to us that have traded before, when I'm mentoring somebody, they'll go, I'm going long the Euro dollar, all my positions, so I'm risking 2%, that's my max I'm going to risk on the trade. They go long the market, they get stopped out, and then they move on to another trade, and they move on to another one. And they, they don't build positions. And when the market takes off, they're in it with multiple position sizes, and their account just takes off like that. So it's just something to suggest. It's money management, and it's just a thing that maybe look at it, because I find... A lot of people are new that scattergun looking for so many different trades instead of concentrating on one or two potential big moves. Yes? And you mean scaling up, it's a kind of scaling up, what you're talking about. But I have a student lecture, and my problem is... Yeah, scaling in, yeah, sorry. I, I go in two orders, and 
Great. Looking going is about having the first dog that I stopped with both kids. So I get some money. And the second one is going to 100, 120, 150. Yeah. And you say about 200 would be nice to have. But then still, after 150, suddenly it's going bad. Yeah. Now, what are you doing? You are closing the trade, or you say, I want to have 200 and I'm stick. All of it's going back to zero. It's the hardest thing is managing the winning trade. Yeah, it's the toughest thing, yeah? <laughs> okay, and it comes with practice and it comes with trading, doing it. But when, it, when those moving averages start to extend and they separate from each other, the market's going to snap back. Now, you've got to decide then, is this enough? Don't let the market take you out. Don't try and think what's going to happen next because we're not good enough. We just got to get the market, does a shooting star reversal. That's telling me the market's going to reverse. Let's get out the trade. So what I would do, I don't know whether this is the answer to your question, but I would trail the whole position as one then. I would trail the whole position as one. So if I buy at 100 and then I buy at 120 and then 150, as it goes up the market to 250, I take the whole position and trail it and lock it in. And then when I get a separation on the MACD or I get so extended, like, you know, dare we say Bitcoin, um, then you bank it, you take the lot, and, and then you, you slow down, you wait for the retracement, and then you maybe look to see if there's another pattern to line up. I, I, I build positions. and I, So if I build a position, I could have a wider stop if I nibble on the trade and do one entry. And when you're new to trading, you've got to get really good entries Otherwise, your, where's your stop? What's the average stop placement for a retail trader? I mean, if you're day trading, it's 12 points probably away in the FX market. Are you skilled enough? Are they, are, you know, new traders skilled enough to have a great entry and a good stop at 12 points away? Most not. So why put yourself under that pressure? Just buy, have a nibble on it and go for the big move and enjoy it and do less. Yes, just an opinion. Yeah, the average true range, the gentleman was saying, it's, it's, it's an indicator you can plug in, pro real time I've got it, it's the average true range of the last 14 periods back, could be daily, weekly, whatever period it is, and it measures the average closing price of that market over that 14 days. So if the average price on a daily chart is 70 pips, average price, then maybe you could use a stop loss that's, I don't know, 70 pips away, 70 points away, that can help you with average true range, where to place your stop loss order. Yeah, you could do, absolutely. I think it's a great indicator. It's a great way of measuring volatility um, because you wouldn't have a stop loss at 12 points trading the um, pound New Zealand. Yeah, you could do that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes. But if I get stopped out and I see the weekly still going for a signal, I will go back in again. Do you use stochastic in your momentum? Do I use stochastic? Yes. Yes. Because they're very nice, especially for this kind of situation. Beautiful. Very smooth. As it gets oversold in that stochastic area, that's probably a decent area to buy. But you need other things around it as well. But yeah, try it. There's the fast stochastic, slow stochastic. Um, yeah. And, and think about manipulating the indicators, you know, manipulating the price and the settings uh, because they, you can speed them up. If you, for example, the RSI, relative strength indicator, isn't it? Yeah, RSI, measuring speed and price closing, then you might want to manipulate that and speed it up a little bit because it might not give you many signals and see what the results are. <laughs> All right. So let's have a little look at the market outlook. This was yesterday, I think. Yeah, was it yesterday? This was the DAX yesterday. So the DAX, anyone got a price of the DAX at the moment on their phone? Anyone give me a price of the DAX? Get your IG apps out. You're up 20 points. Did you go long at 12? No, I didn't Didn't get triggered, never mind, never mind. What's it trading at? 12,246? Yeah, 12,246. All right, so the, the DAX, you know, this is 
up for opinion, guys. But the DAX, you know, we rallied all the way up to 12,500, just shy of that. And we had this big psychological area again. And the reason, I mean, this, if we do Elliott Wave <coughs> basic, that was a wave one. That came back to 76.4%. That was a wave two, uh, wave three advance. Okay, then we come down here, a bit of a zigzag pattern. Remember that chart I showed you with the advance of how price moves? Because wave four tends to be more complicated than wave two pullback. That's a wave three. And then we just, I think we just went above 12,500 and then we're down here. Does it? <laughs> it's already in the chart before manufacturing came out. No, it's not correct. This is, this is just what, is what does that mean? It's already priced in. Well, is it, well, who's buying and selling the DAX? Who's buying and selling the DAX? Well, insti we all are, aren't we? You know, we're all institutions buying it, retail traders are buying it, everyone's tra buying it. Are you saying to me that the reason the DAX has gone down is because manufacturing? So you can't say that to a technical analyst. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if I, I said that once and I got shot down. If you get fundamentals and technicals lined up together, then isn't it a powerful system? But I would never trade fundamentals on their own. Never. What works then? Technical analysis and charts. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not saying there's not one way to trade, is there? If something your account is growing, you trade the way your account's growing. That is as simple as that. There are so many different ways to trade. For me, this was already priced in. It wouldn't have mattered whether I, ISM manufacturing had come out with a bad number or what. It was already priced in to the chart that we were going for a double top. It got rejected there, 12,500, and it just dropped. So what happens, what would I have done, because you know, I like to make a living out of trading, what would happen if the price went to 12,500 and I, my plan was to short it at 12,500 and the manufacturing numbers come in really good, what would, I have done, what would that have done to my psyche, psyche? What would I have done then? Okay, all right. In that sense, because the, the DAX is just reacting on what's happening in the US. Absolutely, yeah. But it's already in the chart. Um, so, it, and if you look at the technical, if you look on the technical level, and the NASDAQ or the, yeah. or the DAX, but the, the, then, you, then, you, then you, you know, this is the, this is the uh, let's say, uh, this, this, is, uh, this comes out of that. Yeah. It, 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 it probably does, and if I was at a dinner party and I was talking about this, it would be great entertainment. We can chat about it, but I need to make some money. I need to make a return on investment. So how do I do it? Do I look at the, the result from manufacturing, or do I look at a strategy that's proved over and over again with good risk reward that I, it, it's successful? Lots of money on the table. Yeah, I left, left my hands in the table. But I was so happy, I needed 90, so. It's <laughs> brilliant, well done, excellent. I mean, you know, only tr other traders know what you go through. But so, how do you know this technical analyzer that is going to drop further? You just don't. You're never going to get out at the bottom unless you just put some orders down there at 11,500 where it's probably going to go. Um, and just walk away. How many times have you, have you made more money by sleeping at night, waking up next morning, and you've made more money than you've ever made, or not being at the screen? You have to, most moves are small moves. A lot of moves are not big moves. So it's gonna fake you out until it goes on a big move. When it goes on that big move, you're thinking, 
ah, oh, I wish I was still in that trade, which you are doing now. So you've got to use a trailing stop order, haven't you? And we're coming into a bearish phase in, in, in uh, this time of the year, aren't we? October, November, December. If you look back at all the market crashes, dare I say that word, crash, it happened in this three-month period. Yeah, the start of 2017. So the stars line up. <laughs> yeah? Is that your strategy? I don't know. Well, you know. Uh, I'm already short on this, already at the 12,500 double top. Okay? <coughs> I have no idea what it's doing now. Am I going to, I mean, I, by looking at the chart now, am I going to necessarily make more money? I, I don't know. I, I think you've just got to try and manage the chart and your expectations. In your head, I'm going for a big move, and so I've got to let it go for a big move. Yeah, just above that 12,500. Now, if it's down 300 points today, and it's making 300 points, or the, sorry, the, the Dow is, I'm not going to leave that stop at break even. My stop's going to come to break, sorry, I'm not going to leave that stop open, I'm going to move to break even, get riskless as soon as possible. Now, well, especially if it's up 150 points, you know, I'm not going to let it come back and stop me out. If you are in a trade, do you hold over the weekend? Over the weekend? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. 100%. I use a stop. I mean, I, I'm not trying to, to say how great IG is, but I am going to say how good they are. I have very, I don't remember the last time I got stopped out with slippage. I don't remember the last time. And other brokers, I'm sure, may well. That may happen, but you could just use, we use a guaranteed stop as well, which means they have to get you out the price that, they, that you put in. It's guaranteed. And you pay a few more points more, but uh, you know, if you're worried about it, you can, I think that IG have just done a new thing where you, if you've got an open trade, you can actually now put a guaranteed stop in, uh, which is brilliant, isn't it? Before, you couldn't put a guaranteed stop in unless you open the trade and tick that box and put guaranteed stop in. Now you can have an open trade, and if you're nervous about China and trade wars, you can put a guaranteed stop in. If, but if, when you're trading FX, they tend, you know, unless the, the Swiss franc scenario where they decoupled and that thing, lucky enough, touch wood, I was not in that. Uh, it wiped out quite a lot of people. Nobody knew that was coming, did they? At all. But yeah, uh, that's the, and it's all about opinions, isn't it? But what makes me think that lots of people get it wrong, because lots of people are along the market, is that you can see when the markets start to decline, look how wide those candlesticks are. Look how wide they are when the markets decline. I mean, what, look at that one there. Look how wide that is. That drop from 11,900 to 11,400 in one trading session. Look how boring the market was going up here. Look how boring it was. It was such a boring market. Now we start. So if we start a drop and we get wide range candlesticks, Maybe we go further on fear. Maybe we do. We, sh we, shall, we don't know. We'll wait. Where are we? Tuesday night? We'll wait tomorrow and see if there's follow through in this, this DAX. Or it might be an opportunity to buy. Um, there's the DAX monthly, by the way. So DAX monthly, before manufacturing came out, had a head and shoulders top on the monthly time frame, which is a reversal pattern when you're trading a head and shoulders top. So on the monthly chart, we've got a head and shoulders top pattern. Um, here's the euro dollar on the daily. It dropped through 10,000, it got to 10,880 around that area. And I don't know what the euro's trading today, it had a bit of a bounce, I think. Can't get through uh, 10930 at the moment. Um, here's the monthly chart. Does the euro go to parity with the dollar? Well, we've got a big support area at 105 on the euro dollar. And here's gold. There's the monthly chart of gold. We broke out of a 
symmetrical triangle on the monthly chart. MACD went above the zero line on the monthly 2019. We broke the symmetrical triangle. Gold went on an absolute tear in the markets, 12,000. Uh, 12, Got all the way up to 16,000. And, and it, it is uh, coming back probably to 14,000 support on the monthly time frame. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. And here's the daily chart, another pattern on the daily chart taken a couple of days ago. Gold had a head and shoulders top. And if you look carefully, it also had an ABC pattern on that right shoulder, which we're into an ABC on gold on the daily chart. Who knows? Gold is normally a flight to safety. And if we do see the stock markets rolling over, then maybe gold might be a good buy. I don't know, Chinese love to buy gold. Um, you know, they're very bullish gold, a lot of gold buffs out there. We shall see. Guys, we've got loads of free education on tradingcollege.co.uk. Uh, please feel free to dive into the education newsletters and videos, which updates you on the current market trends and things like that. It is free of charge. And we've got some paid for ones as well. All right, membership stuff as well. All right. So I think that's pretty much it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Pleasure.